This is the day that God is making. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship as we gather in person, as we gather by live stream, and as we extend a special welcome to any who haven't worshiped here so much in the past. We've been expecting you because we are always expecting one another, the people of God on the journey of faith and life. Today we celebrate Holy Communion. All who long to meet Christ in the bread and the wine are invited to share the Lord's Supper. If you did not receive a communion packet this morning, just give a wave and the ushers can bring that to you. The packet contains gluten-free bread and grape juice. And our worship service today is a communion liturgy from our red hymnals. It's a liturgy in which all the parts of the service are set to hymn tunes following the tradition of Martin Luther's German Mass in which the liturgy for Holy Communion was set to hymn tunes with metrical paraphrases of the various liturgical texts. And as we have the gift of gathering in person in the midst of these extraordinary days, we thank you for sharing in our COVID care practices. We ask that you wear your mask during worship. We are invited to sing with our masks on. Following worship, we ask you to continue to keep your masks on. In our use of masks, we continue to practice care and love for one another and for those who cannot be vaccinated, children and those with special health conditions. Today is a fitting occasion, as is every day, to acknowledge that this land is the traditional territory of the Squaxin Island tribe and the Nisqually tribe. Their presence is imbued in the lands and the waters surrounding us. And so we gather as we live our lives in the name of the triune God, Trinity of love, who is before us, in us, and beyond us, who is wisdom, word and breath of life, who is the creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us share in a time of confession. Let us pray. God of history and creator of all peoples, we stand before you as among those accountable for the well-being of your creation. We have failed you as individuals, as a church, as a nation. We have easily spoken a commitment our lives do not confirm. We have lightly proclaimed a gospel our common life has denied. We have stood firmly against sins we were never tempted to commit. When we kept silent before popular evil, we called ourselves realistic. When we endorsed what everyone favored, we called ourselves good. When we forsook Christ's cause of well-being for all your children, we called ourselves merely human. Blessed with riches, we have let the walls of gold entomb us. Honored with prophets and critics, we have abandoned their dreams and tamed their cries for justice. Commanded to serve, we have expected service. Hardened in order to pardon, we have forgiven only ourselves. Received in order to give, we have given in order to receive. Blessed in order to bless, we have blessed in order to get. Saved by your grace, we thought we had it coming. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Gracious God, make us all bold to ask for the saving grace of your forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. A gift of grace beyond our ever deserving it, a gift of grace beyond all of our expectations. God accepts our repentance and offers us the forgiveness of all our sins. Accept God's acceptance. Accept it, give thanks, and live with new resolve to chart a different path so that God's forgiveness will make a difference in your life. 
Our gathering hymn is number 468. I invite you to stand as you are able. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As a parent, you're able to observe the many way, small ways that God is working through and growing within your children. As your children grow in the world, there are things that can challenge their faith, values, and beliefs. We want to share with you one of those experiences along with how we listened for God's guidance as we navigated the change. So Flynn, I hear you've had a big change over the past month. What happened? My old school, um had a student handbook that um, was the opposite of our beliefs. What did it say? It said that gay people were sinners. Yeah. Well, what do you think about that? Um, I think that uh, God said, love one another. Don't just like tell the whole wide world that they're sinners. Mm-hmm. Um, what what did we do as a family? We talked about it, and then um, we um, went to, and then we checked out in a public school, and then um, now I'm going to the public school. Mm -hmm. What um, what about the 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 new school is is different? Um, you get uh, free lunch and free breakfast, <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, yeah, and they uh, welcome anybody. They do, don't they? Yeah. Um, wh was it was it hard to change schools? No, not really. No, why? What? I was surprised too. <laughs> uh, uh, wh why? Because um, one, a lot of my parents. A lot of my friends were in contact, and two, I've been there for like most of my childhood. Uh huh. Okay. Um, it, was it was it hard to leave your friends? No, I still have them in contact. Yeah, you you still keep track, you keep up with them, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That makes it a little easier, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, did did the people that are remaining in the school sign the handbook? Yeah. Yeah. They, they had they had to right. Yeah. To yeah. Stay in the school. Mm -hmm. Um. Do Do you think any of the remaining families are are bad for signing the handbook? No, because like some of them are my friends, so like friends don't just fall apart the second you f figure out that their belief is the opposite of yours. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. So, so can you be friends with people who have different beliefs than you? Yeah. 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 Um, so myself, as an as a older children of God, um, the last question was the one that I personally struggled with the most, um, knowing and caring for people um, within the LGBT community and understanding that belief can lead to marginalization and discrimination. It was really difficult for me to, me personally, to work through my feelings about this uh, school community um, as well. But um, I was reminded that, um, that compassion and love and empathy for all God's children is the path forward. It can allow for conversations and increased understanding around the different beliefs, viewpoints, and issues involved. And it is within those uh, conversations where God's work is done. So, that's it. Thanks for letting us share. Good, good, that's good. The psalm is for all of you to sing.
so please join in. <laughs> Our first reading this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 31. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chiefs of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with consolation, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks. gospel according to Mark the 10th chapter. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, Jesus is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace in the name of the triune God who made us, who saves us, and who keeps us, who speaks to us in stories and the reflections of our hearts, and in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. There's an old joke about a person who was searching under a bright streetlight for something they lost. Another person came by and asked what that person was looking for. They responded, that they were looking for their car keys, which they dropped somewhere over by their garage. So the other person asked why they were searching under the street light instead of, of over by their garage. And they responded, because it's so much easier to see here. That joke is sometimes spoken of as describing the street light, street light effect about observational bias, about our tendency to look where it's easiest to look. And some people say that this story goes back centuries. Okay, so now hold on to that story while we consider today's gospel story. Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, made do with what he had. It wasn't much. Every day, he made his way out to a spot at the side of the route from Jericho to Jerusalem. He spread out his cloak and cried out to those passing by, asking them to throw a few alms his way every day. That is how he got by. Now, just before this story, the disciples were arguing over who will sit at Jesus' right hand. Jesus tells them, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. That was the gospel story that we reflected on last week. When Bartimaeus hears that Jesus of Nazareth was in the crowd passing by, he cries out to Jesus, have mercy on me. But the people ordered Bartimaeus to be quiet. Maybe they were just enforcing the normal social codes a blind man shouting at a rabbi would be like a poor person accosting a governor for help. But Bartimaeus keeps yelling. Normal social codes haven't worked in the past for him, so he decides to go all out. Ironic that these are the very social codes that Jesus has just been talking about subverting being great by being a servant, the Son of Man coming to serve. 
the disciples and the crowd have just heard this message. But they slip back into the habitual ways of treating the outcast and marginalized. But Jesus hears him. He stands still and says, call him here. And they say, take heart, get up. Jesus is calling you. Take heart, get up. Jesus is calling you. Wow. I hear in that the call of Jesus for the body of Christ, the church with the challenges of being the church in this time and place. Take heart, get up, Jesus is calling you. Have courage. Be raised up in all the power of Christ's life-giving, surprising resurrection. Jesus is calling. The beggar asks, let me see again. And that is what Jesus offers. Sight restored, a broken life made whole, a new life. Except there is one detail we passed over. When Bartimaeus comes over from his place on the side of the road over to Jesus, we are told that he throws off his cloak the one tool he'd been using for so long. His cloak for laying out on the ground to collect the alms of people on the road. He left it behind. Interesting that the rich man in verses 17 to 22 of this same chapter have trouble giving up their riches. I encourage you to read that story. But Bartimaeus immediately throws away his tool for collecting coins. I invite us to consider two two dimensions of this gospel story today. The first is the clear and encouraging invitation. Take heart, get up. Jesus is calling you. That is so encouraging. But I don't know about you, but It could sound a bit like that old American myth that you can just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Have you heard that old phrase? It dates actually from the 1800s and has been called America's most pliable, pernicious, irrepressible myth about rugged American individualism and how if we just try harder, we can each do whatever we need to do, economically speaking. Spiritually, it shows up in the self-help movement. More about that in our November 14th forum. I hope you will read one of Kate Bowler's books before then. So as I've been reflecting on this encouraging invitation to take heart and get up, I, I found a different association to make rather than bootstraps. And it's from nature. I find myself reflecting on the amazing spider webs that we've seen glistening in the sun and the mist on the deck and between plants and in all sorts of places. It's amazing how these webs show up in unexpected places. I have found myself wondering how those spiders ever made that web in that spot. I don't know if I've ever looked at and pondered spider webs so much before while sitting and enjoying the air. So I did a bit of research and learned this. Many spider webs span gaps between objects which the spider could not cross by crawling. This is done by the spider first producing a fine adhesive thread that drifts on a breeze across a gap. When the thread sticks to a surface at the far end, 
the spider feels the change in the vibration, then the spider reels in and tightens the first strand, then carefully walks along it and strengthens it with a second strand. This process is repeated until the thread is strong enough to support the rest of the web. It's the breeze, even slight breezes, that is the secret to the spider's ability to spin a web from one place to another. To put that in the language of faith, the spider's openness to the wind, dare we say the Holy Spirit that we so often image as wind, enables the spider to venture forth, taking steps of faith to spin new chapters, new webs, new possibilities. A spider daring to try to spin new webs in new places, in new ways. I don't think there are many identical spider webs. What a lovely image to consider when we hear the invitation to take heart, get up, Jesus is calling you. The second dimension to consider from this gospel story today is the matter of letting go of old familiar cloaks. I have been so moved by the story of the Berman Solo family and by Flynn's sharing today about how they have made their way from the past to this new chapter of life and school. What a great and powerful example of discerning the need to let go of what has been, to let go of familiar ways that have shaped daily life. So a question that we might all consider, inspired, inspired by Bartimaeus and Berman Solos and the gospel story for this day is this. What might we need to leave behind? What might that be for this congregation at this time? What might that be for our lives in the world at this juncture? What might it mean for you personally? What might you be hearing as something God might be calling you to leave behind as you take heart get up and follow Jesus in deeper ways, in new ways. What are the old familiar cloaks of this congregation? What are your old familiar cloaks personally and in the world? A cloak can be a symbol of old patterns, patterns that are comfortable, but might not be life-giving for this next chapter of life. Now remember that joke I began with? What are the ways we sometimes are like the person looking for their lost keys? Looking where we find it easiest to look rather than where we need to look. How do we sometimes ponder possibilities that are easiest? rather than those possibilities that might be challenging, like trying to find keys in a dark place. And now I'm going to do something that I found inspiring and challenging that was often done by my former synod bishop, Mark Hansen, who then became our ELCA bishop. He would often, in the middle of a sermon, invite people to turn and share for a minute or two with the person they are sitting nearby. So I invite you now to do that. It's especially good if you can share with someone you don't live with. And it's always good to introduce yourselves first. 
And then I invite you to share for two minutes about these questions, about what you or we need to leave behind, whether it be you personally or us as a congregation. I invite you now to talk to your neighbor. All right, I invite you to wrap it up. That was two minutes. So for those of you who don't want to wrap it up, I have a suggestion. <laughs> you can take time to share more about these questions with one another after worship. I invite you to continue the conversation after worship and through the week. Like Bartimaeus, all of us have a need for God's mercy and help. All of us, me, you, each of us. And each of us is invited to hear with the ears of Bartimaeus, to hear the invitation of Jesus to us, to be undeterred, full of hope, willing to follow wherever Jesus leads, even if that means leaving our old familiar cloaks behind. People of God, take heart, get up. Jesus is calling you. May that always be at the center of how we define our life together. Thanks be to God. Amen.
set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all God's creation, responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Strengthen and protect the missionaries who were recently abducted in Haiti. May your presence bring them comfort and hope and courage. God, in your mercy. We give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick. Receive our prayers, especially for the family of Ron and Peggy Fredson, parents of Lynn Burns, the family of Daryl Frazier, the family of retired pastor Joe Wagner, father of Paul Wagner, the family of Mary Spaccaratelli, the family of Karen Kammerer, Laura Nelson, the Stoll family, Julia Westby, Pastor Molly Knutson Keller and family, Carol McCormick and family, Maureen Rasa, Julie Hustoff, Liz, Hannah, Judd, Audrey, Emma, Blaine Clark and family, Susie, Marjorie, Sharon, June, Lorraine, Oma, Max, Madison, Jane Ann, and David and family, God in your mercy. Amen. Living one, we give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith and who have boldly told the story of Jesus' glory. Let us, like Bartimaeus, be undeterred, full of hope, willing to follow where Jesus leads, even if it means leaving our old, familiar cloaks behind. Give us courage to follow in hope and trust until you gather us all around your table of abundance. God, in your mercy. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Not always an easy peace, never an insignificant peace or a half-hearted peace, but the peace of Christ, gift of light on our journeys is with us now. May that peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take time to look around, to consider that each one you see is made in the image of God and then share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. I invite you to be seated for a few community announcements. First, a special word, a daily and weekly word, a clear word, welcome. Welcome to this Good Shepherd community of faith. In the pews, you can find welcome cards that we invite you to fill out if you'd like to share a prayer concern or if you're newer to Good Shepherd and would like to share a bit about yourself or sign up to receive church communications. Those cards can be placed at the welcome tables after worship. Following worship today, you are invited to Quarry Hall, the big room on the other side of the narthex entry area, 
for fellowship and hospitality. While we are not choosing to have coffee or treats after worship, because that means our masks come off inside, we are nevertheless eager to get acquainted and reacquainted to weave relationships and share joys and challenges of the past week. Today in Quarry Hall, there are some displays of Good Shepherd's history. On this day, when the 10 a.m. forum in the sanctuary here invites newcomers to learn about Good Shepherd. The forum in here will be led by a few lay leaders of the congregation. So today is a time for getting acquainted and reacquainted with Good Shepherd. Looking ahead, next Sunday is Reformation Sunday. You are invited to wear red, the color of the spirit. Looking much further ahead, some of you know of a place called Holden Village in the Cascade Mountains. It's a wonderful Lutheran Christian retreat center and a great place for people of all ages. I invite you to come to a Zoom meeting to learn more about it and about the possibility of going there as a Good Shepherd group next summer. That Zoom meeting will be on Wednesday night, November 3rd, and the link will be yet posted on the website. And a few days after that, we will gather for a congregational meeting via Zoom on Saturday afternoon, November 6th at 4.30 p.m. with voting in person to take place on Sunday morning, the next day, November 7th. The purpose of this special meeting is to call a part-time associate pastor. You'll be receiving a special email by the end of this coming week with information about the recommended candidate. All members of Good Shepherd were sent an email this past Friday about the date and time of this special meeting. And now we take time to share in asking God's blessing on the quilts and baby care kits that are being sent off to Lutheran World Relief very soon. These quilts are draped over the pews today, and there's a lovely quilt on the altar table as well. If you are among the folks who shared your time and talents in making these quilts, uh, providing material for the quilts as part of the Peace Corps, and the care kits by a group of um, local Lutheran women, I invite you to raise your hand high. We give thanks for you sharing in this important ministry for the sake of God's dear ones around the world. So now let us pray. Gracious God, today we ask you to bless the quilts and baby care kits that have been created and assembled by loving hands and servant ministers here at Good Shepherd and that are being sent off to Lutheran World Relief to be distributed to those in need around the world. May those who receive these gifts be cared for and healed. May they find dignity and comfort and warmth. And may all these gifts be signs of your love for all people. In Jesus' name we serve and pray. Amen. This morning, another way we worship God is with our financial gifts as we share of our God-given blessings in the offering. Thank you for the ways you generously support the ministry and mission of this congregation.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all that you have made is good, and your love endures forever. May our generosity be signs of our deep gratitude and our commitment to sharing in your purposes in the world, in hope and faith. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, holy God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. We give you thanks that you are the source of light and life, that you made us in your image, and that you call us to new life and healing and courageous hearts in Christ. And so with the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, with all the saints before us and beside us, with siblings east and west, north and south, with our loved ones separate from us now who yet in this mystery are present with us, we proclaim your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us join together as Christ has taught us and praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. The kingdom of God and the glory are yours, now and forever. The table is set. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord, and this feast we celebrate is for you. You who have been longing to be here and you who, who haven't been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and all of us who have failed. You who have much faith and you who have little. This holy meal is for you, not because I invite you, but because Christ invites you. For here is Christ coming to you in bread and wine. For these are the gifts of God given for all of you the dearly loved people of God. Together we are the body of Christ and the feast is ready. I invite you to be seated. I invite you now to eat, for this is the body of Christ given for you. I invite you now to drink, for this is the cup of blessing, Christ, for you. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us in this meal of your presence. Now help us hear your beckoning to take heart and to get up and to follow you into the future with trust in you that whether we are gathered or scattered, we might be the body of Christ, ever rooted in your green grace, ever growing by that grace and ever rising from the dead and discovering new life. 
in all times and places by your transforming grace. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Care for the children, the elders, and the whole creation. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may that spirit so fill you this, so fill you. <laughs> may that spirit so fill you this day that you go forth from this place, daring to look where you really need to, daring to leave behind what you really need to, and daring to follow where Jesus leads because we really get to. And may the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is I'm So Glad Jesus Lifted Me. We'll sing verse one two times. It is number 860. <laughs> peace and take heart because Jesus is lifting you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>